A lot of people ask, well, should I wait for the crash or should I start investing now? Well, we do not wait to buy real estate. We buy real estate and then wait. You're listening to Ice Cream with Investors, a podcast that is dedicated to teaching you how to better invest your money so that you can live a more intentional life. I'm your host, Matt Four, and it is my goal to teach and empower you to remove the roadblocks to your financial success. All right, Dustin, welcome back to the show. Hey, Matt, thank you so much for having me on. It's been a little while since I've been on, but it's super great to see you again. And I'm actually really excited that you and I get to meet for the first time. I had that conference we talked about on your last show, but the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, you're coming and speaking at the conference as well. So great to see you again, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's the good part about 2023 is we can now get back on planes, go to conferences, see each other in person, and maybe even eat some ice cream. Uh, absolutely. I'm looking forward to eating the ice cream. Absolutely. Yeah. That's one of my favorite. Like if there's a food group, it's, it definitely has to be ice cream. For me, it's meat and ice cream. Those are like the main <laughs> food groups. <laughs> Dairy and meat. I'll just, it's there all protein. There you go. <laughs> um, well, Dustin, so for our listeners that might have missed our first episode, would you mind give us an update? Who are you? Yeah, absolutely. So, well, first and foremost, I'm a real estate investor. So I started investing back in 2006 before the crash started buying properties. And I didn't know what I was doing necessarily. I kind of thought, man, I want to make money to be able to quit my job. Or I like the term successfully unemployed. I wanted to make enough money to where I didn't have to work for somebody else. So I started buying for passive income and cash flow. What little did I realize that that was actually the best way to not get hurt by the crash in 2008. I knew so many people that got hurt, they be, they went bankrupt, you know, they're no longer investors anymore, they had to get a job because they were hoping for appreciation, basically speculating, you know, hoping it goes up, or they're getting way over leveraged, or they weren't making money in passive income. And so what I decided to do was from the very beginning, I wanted cash flow coming in every single month, so I could definitely replace my income from my job. And then with that, eventually, everybody else went bankrupt, but I kept buying properties because I kept making more money. I eventually had 30 plus properties and I was blessed to be able to quit my job. And with that, it was kind of fun. Like I'm an investor. That's literally what I do. I love investing. But at the same time, when I was quitting my job, I started telling friends and coworkers and everybody, hey, yeah, I'm going to be quitting, you know, like six months. Then they was like, what do you mean? Are you going to go somewhere? Are you going to get another job? I said, no, I literally own real estate that makes me money without working. And so I don't need to work. And so that was the first question is always, what are you going to do? The second question always came right after that. Well, can you show me how to do that? I was like, well, of course I could, you know, we're friends. I could definitely help you. And so I would help friends and coworkers and and family members just one-on-one. I realized I enjoyed it. But the second thing I realized, it took a lot of time. One-on-one takes a lot of time. So fast forward, wrote a book, then started up, or actually got four books now, but started a podcast, YouTube channel, courses, coaching, and even started a conference all about real estate investing because I found that the more people that I helped in to invest in real estate, the bigger my network got, the more that I got in, like better I did in my business, the more we invest together. And so basically, fast forward now, I'm a real estate investor, but I also love helping and serving others so that they can invest in real estate. And then now I'm able to come on podcast, you know, because I don't work a job. It's been like actually six years since I've since I quit, which has been amazing. And then with that, now I just come on podcasts and talk to awesome people like you, Matt. Awesome. Awesome. Well, great introduction. You mentioned something there about investing in 2006, and we're going through some choppy times right now, right? So we're recording this at the end of March, early April, SVB, Signature Bank, um, mortgage interest rates are up, all that sort of stuff. And it's funny you mentioned that about it helped you weather the downturn, because I haven't told this story yet, but I was I was talking to a former colleague at my W-2 who basically told me the story of like, man, you're doing this right because I would be hosed if something were to ever happen to me. And unfortunately, that person got caught up in the wrong place at the wrong spot and is now kind of scrambling to figure out uh, kind of his next financial situation. So talk to us a little bit about what 2008 was like, and then maybe if you could compare us to what you're seeing today in the market. It's eerily similar to what I'm seeing today. And so, in fact, so in 2008, when the crash started happening, I started seeing lots of problems and I was worried about myself like, oh, what's going to happen on my properties? Because I didn't experience it before. But what happened was my rents went up because sadly, and I get this question all the time, even now I get this question. Well, you know, if there's a bad economy, like won't rents go down? Well, think about it. If there's a bad economy, 
Sadly, the people that get kicked out the first are the banks that have mortgages on a property and they're going to foreclose on a home where somebody can't pay for their mortgage, which is sad. But what does that do for the demand for rental properties? I love residential four units and below. I also invest in syndications, you know, multifamily. I have hotels as well, but I love all types of real estate. But my bread and butter is four units and below. And so when somebody loses their house, sadly, they're going to have to live somewhere. The demand skyrocketed for rental properties, which made my rents go up, which made my passive income go up. Now, the reason why I also say it's eerily similar to 2008 is it seems like the government, the Federal Reserve, which is not part of the government, it's literally a bunch of banks that got together um, to control our system, the monetary system. But with that, it seemed like they just kept kicking the can down the road because they started printing money. It's called quantitative easing. So it's from 2008, 9, and 10, we were going down, but they stopped us from hitting the bottom. It seemed like we could have gone a little bit further, or actually quite a bit further, but they started printing money, bailing out banks like they're doing now. They already have this done in 2008, so they're doing it all over again in 2023 with Signature Bank and um, uh, Silicon Valley Bank. But what they've done is they pushed the can down the road, in my opinion. So I'm, I was thinking, it's going to happen again. Again, sometime, like eventually the uh, the um, but the bill comes due and it's going to happen again. So let me be prepared. So this is what I'm seeing in 2006, 7, and 8, going up to the crash of 2008. I heard everybody say, you better buy now. Like literally everybody, every from your friends and family members, your aunts, the news, everybody was saying, you better buy now or you will never be able to buy real estate. I was like, okay, I better buy it. So I bought my house that I lived in. Then I started investing in real estate. Same thing is happening or has happened since 2020, 21, and 22. The exact same thing. Everybody was an expert real estate investor. Everybody was an expert realtor. Um, Everybody's saying, you better buy now or you'll never be able to buy. Well, we know that now it's already changed. In fact, Phoenix, where I live, the value of homes have dropped at least 15% from its all-time high. Wow. And it's still going to come down even more. Now, that's what I'm seeing, eerily similar, people saying the same things. It's for me, as an investor, I invest in all types of markets, where the market goes up, down, or sideways. I invest and buy more properties. Now, I invest right. I don't ever pay for properties. I don't even pay market value. I underpay for properties, or I, you know, I, I'll make lots of offers until they take them. Then I make passive income. Now, what I'm also seeing with the frenzy for the uh, you know homes, prices skyrocketed. I know from uh, somebody that bought a house in 2014 in, in Phoenix area, it's literally 1.5 million. He bought it for like 400,000. Now it's 1.5 million. It's like there's no way that, that it doesn't happen like that unless there's artificial stuff like interest rates being so low. So now frenzy going on, interest rates so low. Now interest rates are going up. The reason why prices went up is because interest rates were so low. Here's the a, like literally second grade economics or second grade like understanding. People only have a certain amount of money to spend on rent or mortgage, a place to live. Let's say it's $1,800. That $1,800 with a 2% or 2.5% interest rate like it was for a long time, that would go as far as like a $450,000 house, a $500,000 house, because that mortgage payment would fit, that $1,800 mortgage payment would fit. Now that interest rates are 7% and higher, that $1,800 only goes $250,000. So homes are going to sit on the market longer. Prices are going to come down. Now, I have been excited for interest rates to go up for a very long time. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm still buying properties. I buy properties cash. I refinance, pull cash back out, all that good stuff, which we can get into. But with that, I've been waiting for interest rates to go up because when interest rates go up, my competition, our competition, it's like as investors, we're not our competition. There's there's not that many of us. Wh who are our competition and who are the ones that like 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 uh, millions of them is home buyers. Home buyers are our competition. They're the ones. They're the ones that way overpay for properties. They're the ones that are just scrambling to buy the properties. Now they are literally priced out of the market. Prices are going to come cool off and come down, but rents are still going to be high as much as they were already. At, you know, two thousand dollars, eighteen hundred dollars, whatever it might be. So those are a number of things. Plus, I see lots of layoffs coming, like not coming, like literally happening. Google, um, Facebook, like all these big companies, Amazon, they're laying off tens of thousands of employees. That hasn't even hit the economy yet. And so what I'm seeing is back in two thousand eight. It's going to happen again. Don't know exactly when, but it will happen. In fact, historically, 
There's been up and down in the economy overall every seven to eight years. There's a uh, pull, uh, expand and then pull back and extend, expand and pull back every seven, eight years. But since 2008, it's been what, 15 years since something's happened like this? And so it's compounded. It's like twice as long as it should have taken. So all this, there's so many more things we can go into. Like gold literally hit $2,000 an ounce, which is like the most it's been since 2008. Like it's, it's, there's lots of other stuff. But what I'm saying is if you're a real estate investor, you should be getting excited because this is going to be the best time ever to invest in real estate. What you're going to realize too, is that what's going to happen is prices are going to come down. Interest rates will still be high, but that doesn't matter because we care about the prices come down. And when those prices come down, then we make more money in passive income. But the reason why interest rate doesn't matter to us is because we're investors. We don't pay our interest. I, I'll give you an example. I have 30 plus properties now. I don't pay the interest on my mortgage. I don't even pay the principal. I don't pay my taxes. I don't pay for my insurance. I don't pay for my property managers. I don't pay any of that stuff. My tenants pay for all of that. Now, so happens the money comes into me, then back out to all these bills, but I don't have to get a job to pay for my property manager. I don't buy the house or the property unless it can be managed by somebody else. So all this adds up to me saying, if you're listening to this right now, you want to be thinking, my goodness, I listen to Matt all the time, week in, week out. You know, Ice Cream as Investors is such a great podcast. So you're listening to it and you're wanting to invest. And I love this saying, because a lot of people ask, well, should I wait for the crash or should I start investing now? Well, we do not wait to buy real estate. We buy real estate and then wait. And another thought is, if you're thinking, should I wait again? Well, let me give you this uh, parable or not parable, but like a, a, a proverb. When is the best time to plant a tree? Well, it was 20 years ago. The next best time is literally today. If you plant that tree today and you know you're, how to do it right, you're going to be so successful. In 20 years from now, you're going to be thinking, I am so glad I listened to Matt. I started investing back 20 years ago. And look where I'm at now. Instead of, I wish I would have invested back 20 years ago when I was listening to Matt. Yeah. But all the above is, is, this is literally, we're starting the best time ever to invest in real estate. Yeah. And to your point about interest rates, so interest rates drive the value of properties, right? And so I forgot what the REIT was, but there was a REIT out there that recently foreclosed on 400 billion or 400 billion in, um, uh, in their debt in multifamily. So now the bank acquires that, but the bank is not in charge of running a real estate portfolio or a REIT. So now they're going to try to offload it off their books. Well, what are they going to offload it at? They're going to offload it at the current market value because no one's going to come in and overbuy. SVB, as we're talking today, SVB just got their depositors acquired at 70 cents on the dollar, I think. So they got a 30% discount that requiring bank did because it's a distressed asset. So I like where your head's at in terms of it's a bloody market right now. Uh, it's a very choppy market, but that's where you as an investor can go out there and gobble up some really good properties at a severe discount. Absolutely. But I, I would say it's not even bloody yet. Now there's a couple of nicks and we got some bruises now. It's not even bloody yet. I remember back in 2009 and 10, that was pretty bloody because, and you'll know, oh, let me say this. You will know when it's a bloody market. That is when the news is saying, and that's when your aunt is saying, that's when your coworkers, everybody's saying, never buy real estate. It's the worst investment or that's the worst thing. When everybody is telling you, do not do this, do not buy, that's when we buy. Just like when everybody's telling you to now buy, like the entire like uh, news and like I had a cousin, literally lived, it lives in Pocatel, Idaho. And I was talking to him and he said, you better buy now or he's not an investor. He literally makes like pottery glasses and stuff. Like he has no clue about real estate investing. You better buy now, you'll never be able to buy. I'm like, when people like that, that have no clue what they're doing are telling me it's the absolute worst time ever to buy. Now, when is when is the best time to buy? It's when everybody's telling you, never do this. I like being contrary to market. In fact, Warren Buffett says, when there's blood in the streets, that's when we need to be buying. In fact, when everybody's telling you to do something, like the entire a frenzy of people and news and everybody's thinking one way, we need to do the opposite. And so I'm looking at right now, we're just getting a couple bumps and bruises. It's not even bloody. You will know when it's bloody. We heard these banks closing up, SVB, um, Signature Bank, and there's, I think, one other one, but also the crypto exchanges, like they're closing up. The only reason why that hasn't hurt us like Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers back in 2008, those are two big banks that collapsed and that hurt the economy. 
The reason why that hasn't affected us now is because the Federal Reserve came right in because they knew what mm-hmm. happened in the past. They came right in and bailed them out and just literally gave our tax dollars and gave it to them. All that to say, we are entering. It's not here yet, but it will be. Now, here's what I also like. I, I coach a lot of people how to invest in real estate. And when they ask me, well, Dustin, should I start getting education now? Or should I start building my business now? Should I start investing now? Should I start saving money now? Like, you should literally start doing all of it. And think of it like this. If the best time ever is coming to invest in real estate, you want to be ready before it's here so you can capitalize on it. Just like if you go surfing. Let's say you go surfing, you know, you're on a board, you're waiting for a wave, and then the wave comes. You do not wait until after the wave passes you to start paddling. You'll miss the wave. You might catch it, but more than likely, you're not going to. Same thing with real estate investing. You want to start paddling before that wave gets here so you're ready. You're already investing. You already have financing. You already have the right people in place. You already have other companies that want to give you money. You have other investors. You have a network of people around you. And so you're paddling before the wave gets here. And as soon as the wave comes, you're literally able to catch that wave and wave and ride it all the way in. I wish you would have told me that analogy when I first started surfing. I've been surfing one time and I was like, oh, I got this. No worries. All that. I'm pretty athletic. I can stand on a board. I didn't know the right timing on catching the wave. So I just remember I wiped out this one time. The board comes right back, hits me right in the face. I'm bleeding. Everywhere. I've been there. I'm like, should have gotten a lesson. Should have gotten a lesson. I've I've been there and I, I love surfing. Well, I'll tell you one quick story too. One little uh, quick story about not being ready. So I'm used to like three foot waves, not big waves, but three to four foot waves, kind of small ones. And my buddy said, hey, do you want to go down to Los Angeles area? And we're going to go to this place called Black's Beach. It's got some pretty awesome waves. I'm like, all right, that's fine. I had no clue what I was getting into. Basically, I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared for this. I went on these waves. It was like, I want to say it was like an eight foot wave. And the undertow was so huge. I literally got crushed. And Matt, I kid you not, I was under the water for so long. I literally thought in my brain, I might die right now. I literally thought that. Yes, my lungs started burning. And then I knew, okay, just just sit there. Do not struggle. Eventually, the crush is, you know, the the wave and the the, the whatever, the swirling thing is going to go away. Then you'll pop up. Because if you start, you know, really start trying to paddle, you might eventually be paddling the wrong way or swinging the wrong way and hit the ground. As of, and I've heard many stories about that. Instead of going up to the air, and so praise the Lord, I'm uh, obviously alive. But man, that was so scary. That's yeah. that's like if you try to invest before you even know what you're doing and you're just jumping in, you could definitely get hurt. In fact, back in 2008, I knew lots of people that literally went bankrupt because they didn't know what they were doing. So definitely everybody, you need to keep listening to Matt's podcast. You need to keep learning how to do this, but then start implementing it little by little and then grow on the smaller waves and eventually get up to bigger waves and you'll be riding all those as well. Yeah. Let's talk about learning for a second, because I believe that real estate investing is a team sport. You don't need to know everything. You just have to build the right network around you in order to be able to ask questions. So for instance, we're going through tax season right now. I'm having a lot of questions right now on K1s, K3s, all those sorts of things. And it makes so much. it makes it so much easier to know I could pick up the phone and call someone and ask those questions too. And I found that person by attending some of these conferences And I know you mentioned earlier, your real estate wealth building conference is on May. It's coming up in May, uh, 4th through the 6th. And tell us a little bit about the conference, why you decided to put it together, and we'll go from there. Yeah, totally. So every year, we're going to be putting on this conference. This is the second one. So every year, like next year might be in St. Louis, at least I'm looking at areas. But it's a conference that I put on because I really wanted a conference like this when I started investing. So when I first started investing, it was 2008, sorry, 2006 into 2008, you know, all that time I started investing and I went to one of those, uh, you know, I was watching late night TV. One of those infomercials came on and said, Hey, we're coming to your town, a free two hour seminar. I went to that. I was like, yay. I went to that. And it was all hype, all sales pitch. And then they said, now run to the back. It's normally $80,000, but it's a $1,000 today. The first hundred people sign up. And I was like, yeah, okay. I did that. Then I went to their two day seminar. And it was all hype, all sales pitch for a $40,000 course and $80,000. It was just, it was, it was horrible. Just all sales pitch. That's what it was. And then I started going alone. I literally said, well, I'm just going to have to do it myself. There was no podcast, no YouTube channel, nothing. There was like ice cream investors wasn't even obviously around. And so with that, I had to do it myself. And then once I started coaching people and then I started piecing it together, like I had one success from one student. 
and then another one and another one. And I started connecting them together. Like, Hey, you guys are doing great. How about you guys get together and talk, you know, just start working together. And that started working out really well. Now I literally have hundreds of students. Now I coach, we all have a Slack channel where we're all in there together, asking questions, helping each other out. Then they said, Hey, Dustin, can you, like, we want to meet up. We're all friends online. Can we have a meetup where we can, you know, physically come a person? I said, that's a great idea, but how about I do something a little bigger? that has more robustness, no, like not just talking about like just hanging out. Let's let's actually learn and do this. So I called up all my podcasting friends, YouTubing friends. And last year was the first year we had 28 speakers. All the people came, like all of our speakers were bringing our audiences together to help each other out because it's no sales pitch. In fact, my, uh, I guess, going through the sales pitch type of conference and seminars made me never want to be a part of that and never have one of those. So this is a no sales pitch conference this year. We have 43 speakers. Matt, obviously you and I are going to be speaking there. And it's all about bringing investors together so that we can help each other out. I'm having people that do taxes, people that do syndications or multifamily, um, storage units, Airbnb, like literally all types of investing. We're all getting together. But here's the big thing that we're building. It's not a conference, not just an event. It's a community of people that are going to help each other out. I've gotten so many people risk, like basically letting me know that from last year to this year, they've grown tremendously because of the conference networking with the people. So now fast forward, I am blessed to be able to put this on again because there are so many people that want to invest and we're gathering together like-minded people that are genuine and helpful. So if you listen to Matt's podcast, you absolutely know Matt's absolutely genuine. People that listen to my podcast realize that, hey, Dustin's a genuine guy. I want to be around Dustin and the people that he's going to bring together. And so we're bringing a community of awesome real estate investors together so that we can all help each other out. But it's a three-day conference. It's literally like I'm planning it out. I'm super pumped. I'm just excited for myself to go and learn from all these people and experience everything. So for me, I'm building something I wish I had when I first started investing. So hopefully your audience will be able to take advantage of it. Yeah, absolutely. I can confirm the no sales pitch. I know we've talked a couple of times about my presentation and some of the things I wanted to present. And you've said multiple times, no sales pitch, no sales pitch, no sales pitch. <laughs> so I can confirm. And I mean, looking through the agenda in the speakers, there's a lot of people on there that have been wanting to connect with. And it's a great opportunity to see people live and get a chance to shake hands, break bread and really get to connect with them. I'm glad you mentioned that breaking bread 100%. So this is a three-day conference. And with that, I love the idea of having fellowship or community, like having a community, helping each other out, and then literally breaking bread or, or eating together. And I mean, there's nothing like, uh, and it's not going to be necessarily like my wife's not going to cook for everybody because there's going to be, you know, like five or 600 people, but having a home cooked meal where you're just at somebody's house and you're really connecting and bonding and, and like feel like doing life together. Same thing with RubeCon. I'm putting together so many, as best as I can, events where we can either eat together, network together, but basically it's all about the content, the teaching, but mostly it's about the community and, and eating together, breaking bread together and enjoying life together. Because when we do that, my goodness, relationships just blossom. Like, oh man, you do that. I do this. Maybe we can work together or you have a way for funding. Like maybe you're a private money lender and I have some properties we can work together. It's so much better when you you expand your network of people around you and not just in general, because you there are a lot of takers out there in the world. And you, I would bet, I would I would actually safe to, to bet that everybody listen to your audience in your audience, Matt, they're not necessarily the taker type. Because usually takers listen to people like us, like you and me, who are just givers, and they stay around for a little bit, but then they they move on. They move on because they don't they they don't get what they want because us as givers i actually chew off the takers in fact i have had a lot of people trying to i'm not going to name any names but people wanting to speak at the conference and they just come across to me either i know them really well well enough to be like eh no thank you or they come across as a taker and i'm only and to speak at the conference you have to be invited by me personally you have to be a giving person. You have to be something that literally just wants to help people. And when you do that, my goodness, it it pays off in dividends. So everybody listening to this, I want you to realize that when you start to serve people, you get more fulfilled. Now, not necessarily, like, oh, I'll give you an example. 
So when I bought my first property, I was so excited. I, w- I was, I, it was fantastic. It was a great feeling. Then when I quit my job, it was an even better feeling because I accomplished something. But I, I, I mean, I kind of felt fulfilled, but I kid you not, when I serve and help my students to get their first property and then let alone quitting their job, I feel so much more fulfilled because I got to be there to help somebody else do this. And same thing. And so think about you, anybody listening, coming to the conference and you getting help by other people, but don't miss the other part of it is you helping other people and the reward that comes from that. Who knows? Maybe the person that you're helping that might be a few steps behind you is going to be this big, huge real estate investor that they're going to help you along along the way as well. So we just need to have that perspective that as givers, we just err on the side of giving. And those takers, they literally weed themselves out. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. They weed themselves out mm-hmm. because the givers like us, we just stop talking to them. Like we just kind of move yeah. on. Okay, we'll talk to you later and move on to somebody else. So all that to say, what I love about the community that we're building is we're all like-minded, wanting to help and to be very, very giving and breaking bread together. Yeah, I um, I like giving because of two reasons. One, there's a natural dopamine effect that you get as an individual when you help other people. But two, I feel like I learn the most when I'm helping others solve their problems because somebody sent me their underwriting of a car wash the other day and they were like, hey, can you do this? Because we're doing some car washes now. And I started looking at it. I'm like, wait a minute, why are you guys doing it this way? Tell me about this. And then he taught me some things about it that we're not implementing in our business. So I think it's giving is a two way street, right? Not only do you give away some of the value that you've accumulated over the years, but you're also going to receive a dopamine effect and maybe even learn something along the way. Oh, definitely. And I'll, I kid you not, I am excited to for myself to learn at the at the conference, even though I've been doing it for you know a number of years. We literally got hundreds, if not thousands, of students now, but. I don't do everything perfectly and I don't invest in every single way. I'm looking forward to learn about storage units. I have a friend of mine, his name's Seth Williams. Awesome guy, has a really good podcast and everything. He's a friend of mine. He's going to be coming. He's literally building his own, like he, he's a land investor, bought land and is literally excavating and putting infrastructure and creating a storage unit. I'm like, dude, let's talk. This is going to be awesome. So I'm looking forward to learning as well on top of me giving. So a uh, quick note on Seth, I, uh, since I've gotten involved in the real estate game a couple of years back, my dad now goes and he follows different people in the real estate game. So we have something to communicate on and talk about. He loves Seth. So I can't wait. Seth is one of those when I saw on the list, I was kind of excited about because I want to take a picture with him and send it to my pops. Oh, that's perfect. And uh, obviously you're, you're with speaker. So you'll be at the speaker dinner. Perfect timing. Seth is such an awesome guy. Genuine. In fact, he's literally the first person I called when I thought of creating the conference, I call it, Hey Seth, I'm thinking about doing that. And he's, he's a mild, if you listen to his podcast, he's a mild mannered, really easy going guy. And I said, I think about doing this. Would you want to come and speak at the conference? He said, huh, I've never done anything like that. And actually public speaking frightens me. But since you're asking, yeah, sure. I'll be there. And I was like, yeah, awesome. it's perfect. And so awesome. now he's done it one time. He's doing it again, this time again. Awesome. Well, tell our listeners, Dustin, where can they find out more information and get tickets? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, everybody, I want you to get your tickets, get 10% off because you listen to Matt's show every single week. Use the promo code Matt, M-A-T-T. So if you go to rubcon.com, it's the abbreviation of the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, R-E-W-B-C-O-N.com. You go to rubcon.com and use that promo code, use a promo code Matt give you 10% off any of your tickets. And you really just need to be there to be around all these investors. And then you get to hang out with Matt, somebody you always listen to. It'll be great to hang out with them. And then you're gonna inv- you're gonna be with my audience and with me as well, and the 43 other speakers all working together. But in the end, what it really comes down to is how can we help more people to invest in real estate? In fact, I last year at RubeCon, I told everybody my new goal in life my first one was to quit my job, and I did that. I was blessed to be able to do that. Now my new goal in life is to help 1 million people invest in real estate and hopefully become financially independent. And this is an outlet of that, getting people together, helping everybody out. It's going to be amazing. And like I said, no sales pitch. It's all about giving. Well, we'll have sponsors there, but these sponsors are companies that I use and us speakers use in our business. There was some companies that want to sponsor like crypto companies, like, well, that doesn't really fit us. I mean, I I get it, but no. So this is all geared to help you as a listener 
become a better investor, get a bigger network, and really, honestly, come hang out with Matt. Matt's going to be a great guy to hang out with. So you want to be there, but use the promo code Matt. Definitely get 10% off your ticket. Awesome. And I'll, I'll, I'll give the sales pitch. If you check out with the promo code Matt, which we'll leave in the description, I'll buy a bowl of ice cream so we can eat ice cream together out there. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Dustin, thanks for coming back on the show. Super excited to see you in a couple of months. And uh, thanks again. Absolutely, Matt. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Ice Cream with Investors. If you like what we serve you here, it would mean the world to me if you would like, subscribe, and leave a review on your favorite podcast app.